Southern brethren, what, what ought we to say to these things which we've heard this evening? We've heard of this new heart which we've been granted in Christ Jesus, this uh, a separation which we've had from our flesh and the circumcision of Christ. We've heard of this effectiveness of faith to be able to empower us to, to believe, to overcome any and all unbelief. A faith does, in fact, work in you. It does. It, it, that faith believes. It does. It makes you assured and confident and certain. It, it makes you persuaded. It does, in fact, make you, make you sure of yourself and, and, and in your belief. It it. It can do none else. That's what faith does. It believes. If this is the case, this being the case, we must come to the conclusion that those who profess to be in Christ, uh, where there is not confidence, where there's not an evident separation from the world, where there hasn't been a change in them and, and a noticeable change, that there's something wrong. And, and, and if, if there isn't... A, a, if they don't say that there's something wrong, then uh, I think that that's, that's the reason why we're in the point where we're at in the church right now. Because there hasn't been some honest self-examination. Uh, wherever th these things aren't found, they haven't stopped and say, hey, there's something wrong. Uh, to, to do anything else actually perverts the name of Christ and it, it, it drags His name in the dirt and it, it perverts salvation. And that's, that's the reason why we are... And then in the place where we are right now, it's either you're not right or what God has done isn't right. That's the only two conclusions that you can come to. Now, this being said, I exhort you, brethren, this evening to examine yourself to see whether these things are in you. Now, I know that I'm not talking to a bunch of wayward brethren, but uh, well, the reason why I'm saying this is to, to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. This, we've had a fresh pers perspective on this lately. To examine yourself to see the, the things that the Lord has done in you. Yeah. To, to see the fulfillment of these things in you. If you see something that, that, that has been promised this evening, that in fact isn't in you, then flee to Christ to obtain it. Uh, we, we have not been this evening, as some have, uh, fallen prey to the notion that doubt is actually an aspect of faith. And we know that this is an imagination from the wicked one. We, uh, this is actually answered in one verse of Scripture. That he that doubteth is damned. Well, there you go. That uh, answers that whole heresy right there. Um, I, actually, I was reading this last week, uh, The Holy War, uh, John Bunyan, and he had a, a really f fresh perspective on this I enjoyed. Uh, uh, he was talking um, whenever King, the, King Shaddai was sending his four captains to go to um, retake Mansoul. Uh, King Di Diabolus called, saw them coming, and so he gathered all the people together in a frantic attempt to um, uh, make some kind of a defense. And so he gave them this armor. And uh, his defense uh, against the, the shield of faith was to give them this shield of unbelief. And what he told them was, that, uh, what you do to, to um, uh, arm yourself against this assault of his word is to, to doubt it. You know, you have the shield of doubt. And any word that he, he tries to enter in, you just, you just doubt it. Just say, you know, say no, just doubt it. And that'll be your defense against his, against his word. You know, I, I, I thought about this this evening. Uh, if the shield of faith can... can uh, um, guard against the fiery darts of the wicked one, then that's, that's like how doubt is within the heart of the believer. It's like, it like neuters the Word of God. It's, it like neuters its effectiveness and its power. It's like cancer to the, to the child of God. So I want to exhort you this evening, brethren, to wage war on doubt in your lives. It's, it's, um, uh, the, the devil is, uh, is crafty in his devices against us. It, it, might, it might not seem like you have any doubt. You think, well, I'm not doubting, but it, you'll see uh, just little things creep up. Whenever you see those things, don't, don't be diligent to, to take care of them as soon as you notice them. I exhort you this evening, brethren, to seek, more importantly, to seek to obtain the things which you need to run this race before you. This assurance, assurance as Brother Given has said this evening, it's absolutely necessary if we're going to make it to glory. And this is an assurance which can only come from God. It, it, it's, it's one that's based in eternity. It, and it also, it may not always have an earthly manifestation. Uh, there may be times when, when we might be called to work in this, in this world for a, a, a great period of time in which we don't have any kind of a, a, um, earthly kind of 
um, confirmation of the Lord's favor and blessing, mm -hmm. but, but we're able to, by faith, continue to labor because we, we know that, that, that this will work out for our good. We know that we, we can be confident of this outcome by faith because of this assurance, because we know of the, the, that uh, this thing is going to work out for our good. Now, I don't believe that this concept of assurance is really understood in the church of our day because faith has been uh, redefined merely as a mental assent to the gospel, or whatever that means. So they say that you know faith is just on the same level. We believe in God the same way that we believe in gravity, that the way gravity keeps us from floating into space. You know, it's. Uh, this is a transcendent assurance to something like that. I mean, it's, a, it's an eternal assurance. It's one that can only, received as our, it can only be received, as our brother said, by our new mind and our new heart. It's, it's a peace that passeth understanding. This is a spiritual peace, so to speak. So, uh, that being said, there are going to be situations in your life that are going to be impossible to overcome unless you have this assurance. The, the, Lord is, the Lord's going to make it this way. That, that you're not going to be able to pass through this circumstance unless you have this peace, unless you have this understanding. And those are going to be those times where it's, it's going to be made evident to you. Uh, if, if, if you're going to be able to obtain and maintain, to be able to follow the Savior wherever He goes, as He's leading many sons to glory, you, you need to have this unwavering assurance that the things which the Lord has promised will indeed come to pass. I mean, we, we've, we've given up everything in our lives for this. You know, we have laid down our lives for this. Yeah. So we, we have to have some assurance here that, that this is going to come to pass. So then, brethren, this evening, seek the things that are above and not in the things on the earth. Find refuge in these heavenly places. He's, he's given us a refuge. He's given us a place that's, that's above the molestation of the enemy. A place where, where we can go, where we can be free from that. I exhort you this evening to seek to obtain, to press towards the mark, and to take courage because, brethren, tonight, uh, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Or open for your comments now, brethren. Brother